If you have any kind of live performance and you're trying to build a demo around it or try to build a production around it, you might want to tempo map instead of bringing the things into the grid. There are usually always some sort of video that this is the way to do it. There's not one way to do it. I will show you five different ways and <clears throat> stick with whatever makes the most sense to you. Straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis and let's get into it. So I have this drum performance. And remember that what you might want to do is to always first get the first hit on the first bar so you can actually make this work. And as you can see, I don't have a five bar loop. Uh, this session with this recording from overheads, I have a whole video on it. If you want to download it, it's completely free available on my Gumroad. So you can also use this to practice your tempo mapping. So first of all, I could use the tap tempo right here to try it and figure it out. Or I could just select the four bars and use the action detect, tempo, create measure. But sometimes this will bring me to a really strange result that could give me a half time and it will ask me if it's 52. It has happened. So if these are four bars and it's counting only two bars, just double the time up and you're going to be in the ballpark. Other than that, what you might want to do is to probably go into a fixed number, for example, 104, and then drag again the beginning of your, of your media items all the way to the first bar and try to make it work for the last, for the actual ending of the bar. And you can see I have this really strange extra hit, so the bar actually would end right here, right? So this first way of doing it, uh, I saw it some years ago on Kenny's channel. So for all of them, you will need to be able to see under the view menu, your tempo envelope. Let's go up there. And now you will get this green line right here. Remember that usually this goes in a really big range. So you can right click it and range scaling for this. I know the tempo is around 104. So I'm going to give myself some space and I will go from 95 to 110, probably something like that. So now I have a better range to work with instead of going from 200 and something all the way down to 50, right? So by holding shift, your cursor will change and you can start adding some tempo mapping cues like this, right? Usually I have a longer video on how to do stretch markers and editing mindset. I will also link it in the description and it has a lot to do with not just dragging everything into the grid. If you drag the 16th notes into the grid, you're going to kill the performance completely. So I would usually go into the 16 bar loop or the eight bar loop and start working into the loop as it needs. I'm going to find this transient right here and I'm going to set another tempo marker right here, right? I'm going to set up another tempo marker right here in the bar five. And by holding command or control on the PC, I can just drag it to fit this bar right here. And now I will have my four bars by changing the relative time in my session and not changing the length of my loop, right? So now I can see I'm going up to 104.6, something like that, but the middle is quite ahead. So I will do exactly the same thing right here shift click, drag a little bit. So I'll see that the second part of the loop is a little bit slower and this is a little bit faster. That way I am getting closer and closer. I could go again into the bar. So I could always, always have the bars just in time, the changes of the bar, two and four. And now I can see the actual fluctuation of time of the live drummer. He's speeding up and then going down and it's going to speed up and then go down. If I set up my marker into the grid and loop it with a metronome. And maybe this is kind of a big move, but this is what the drummer played. So maybe you could build it around these two bars, but that's something that you have to start deciding where you want to take the production and what direction do you want to take the production into. Option number two is you are just going to use some actions that are related to the position of your cursor, this line right here. So again, you have to really start your loop right where it should. Be careful with the fades and such so you don't kill the transient of your drums or whatever you're editing. And let's make this the very beginning of things. 
I have all of my media items grouped, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to work around the dynamic split items, transient sensitivity, and let me change the colors a bit. So first of all, we have this line right here, and these lines are the thresholds. I'm not going to use the threshold of the gate, I'm going to use the threshold of the transient detection settings, right? So that way I can figure out when I'm actually getting kick and snare and not get any bleeding inside of a microphone, maybe you're using your snare drum or your kick drum. I would highly suggest that you use the kick drum because it's more pulse based. And these ones I might be missing, so I'll go a little bit down, reduce a little bit the sensitivity of this. Maybe around 70% should work because this goes hand in hand with another action that's called move cursor to next transient in item. So now I can move my cursor from transient to transient and I'm going to look again for every single bar. So this is bar two. I'm going to use another action that's called move closest grid line to edit cursor. And you will see that now it fits. I'm going to go without the grid in the back to this transient. I'm going to hit this again, disable the grid, move transient, activate the grid, pull it, and this last one is actually on the right spot. So I don't need to do anything else, like just a little bit of something and just drag it right here. And now I have a really fast grid relative to my transients, right? So that's option number two. Option number th three, I would have to use your the stretch markers. So for this, I have to group all of my drums, and again, make it start at the beginning of A bar, whichever it is. <clears throat> and I'm going to use different actions called set stretch marker, add stretch marker at cursor and at mouse position. You could do this just by hand and like dropping every stretch marker when you're moving your cursor or your mouse position. Again, using the tap to transient or whatever you might want to use. So I'm going to use my mouse position. So I'm going to hit Control S. So I have my first stretch marker right there. I'm going to go into the second bar and I'm going to set it up right there. My third bar, my fourth bar, and my last bar. Now I have four stretch markers in this set, in these media items. From there, I have to run the action, create project markers from stretch markers in selected items. I'm going to run this and now it's going to build these markers. From there, I'm going to use a script that's in the rear pack that's called create tempo map for markers. And now I have again, every single tempo built in mapped. The thing is, again, if you're moving this and doing it all the way down into your 16th notes, if you have any plugins that are following the tempo of the session, for example, delays and they are timed, they might be, they might be moving around a lot. So be careful with that. That's option number three. Option number four is again using the dynamic. Option number four is again using the dynamic split items menu and you will use the action to perform add stretch markers to selected items. And you would just have to really tweak, again, these settings, set up your threshold properly, check that you're actually landing whatever you want to. So I want the biggest hits. So let's call them those, for example. So let's make it something like that. You will probably have to vary a lot more the slice length and the sensitivity of this because once you set up the markers, as you can see, it's going to make a lot of them. And again, you can just run this into markers and from there to tempo map. This one I don't really like, but I have seen people use it. So even though I don't use it, it's good to share things that I'm not necessarily using. And option number five, this one is kind of similar to the third one as well. So I will just move first into the beginning of a bar. So again, I'm just going to set up really fast my stretch markers. I highly suggest that you're using your toolbars. I have a whole video on that. Mine is called tempo mapping. So I have these sections that I have been telling you about up here. And I have this action to create project markers from the stretch markers. And you have to go into the extensions from the React pack tempo and convert project markers to tempo markers. 
Why is this one different? Well, uh, first you can adjust how many markers you're going to use per measure. You can change the time signature of your grid and you can ramp your tempo changes instead of it being like these strong movements. This is probably the most interesting part of this. And another great thing is that you can only convert time selection instead of using selected media items. That's an, another way to work. So let's make it with a ramp with gradual tempo changes and let's make it like that. So as you can see, this time it's trying to figure it out and it's like a quarter time because we had a tempo of 104 really and now we're going all the way down to 26. Twice that is 52, twice that, double that, it's 104. So this is a strange behavior. So instead of having four markers per measure, I'm going to have one marker per measure. I'm going to convert this and now it's actually getting 104 and it's creating this really small ramp that you can actually see on the tempo envelope right here, right? So those are five ways to do it. From here, the other thing that's interesting to do is that in one single click, maybe you don't want to create the ramp and you just want to remove these markers that you're using and just stick with your song structure markers. So you can just do this and it's going to clean up your session again and you can go back into creating this and calling this a verse or something, right? So those are five ways to create some time tempo mapping in your session in Reaper. This is something that's really, really, really useful to do because sometimes you don't need to start dragging everything into the quarter notes. Like, honestly, it's not always the best choice. Sometimes you have to build around who has the best pocket, who has the best groove, and from there you start editing your session because that's part of the big deal on how production sounds, how it's on how a final production sounds, how it sounds. If you like this kind of videos, remember that every single action will be in the description as well as, the, as this session. And the other video where I tell you how to listen to overheads will be also linked in the video with this session and so much more information so you can keep on practicing and improving your oral and listening skills. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you see every video every single week. Straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and thanks for listening.